And welcome into Views from the Sideline. It's January 2nd. It's a new decade. 2020 is here. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. My partner, Malik Hill. That was a clip from Michigan State winning the Big Ten title last year over Michigan. Uh, also going 3-0 and against Michigan last season. And now, this weekend, they will return. And so we're hyping it up. We're excited. Malik, how was your new year? Um, how you doing? It was it was pretty good. Spent time with family. Ate some good food. I'm just hoping this decade is better for Detroit and Michigan sports because this has probably the, been the worst. I can't think of another decade from, from 2010 or 2009 to 2019. Even teams that made it to the championship could never finish. Right. Many teams just were terrible. I... Let's, let's start fresh in 2020. Yeah. And Detroit, I, Detroit and Michigan teams, let's just step it up yeah. a little. Well, and at I think least. Like that clip is the only example of solid like sports in this like area. Michigan right and Michigan, Michigan, State, Michigan basketball State basketball have been the only. Yeah. <laughs> They've been good yeah. the last few years, and it's the only thing we can look forward to. Um, but this weekend, we'll basically start off Big Ten play for the most part. Uh, Michigan State plays tonight against Illinois uh, to really kick off the Big Ten, but the biggest game, obviously, this weekend, Michigan, Michigan State. What's your thoughts early on on this game with both of these two teams coming in with a, a few question marks, per se? Honestly, it's it's hard to call it because Cassius Winston sat out last game. Uh, Rocky Watts is coming back. He's still getting... He had a good game last game, but he's still getting into the groove of things. From a game-to-game -game basis, you don't know what you're going to get with this Michigan State team. I mean, I think tonight versus Illinois is going to tell a lot what they're going to look like coming Sunday. I think uh, most people know what Michigan is at this point, even though having Isaiah Livers out now is a key thing. He's their most productive offensive player. He's been their best shooter this season. It's going to hurt not having him, but I think starting Brandon Johns is going to bring even more energy to that starting five because he's relentless on the boards. When he gets the ball, he can make a play. He gets to the free throw line a lot. He can hit a three. He's he's an energy guy. That's He's going to get that team riled up. I think especially with him being a kid from Lansing, playing for Michigan at Breslin, I think he's going to want to step it up even more. He's going to be fired up. Hopefully he doesn't get a tech or anything, right. which – it's 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 really hard. I'm I'm assuming Michigan State is gonna win. It's Jawan Howard's first big rivalry game. Yeah. And he hasn't won a Big Ten game on the road yet, and I'm sure they're gonna struggle some more with those with seeing how deep the Big Ten is this season. So it should be a close game all the way through, like the games have been right. for the whole past decade. Mm -hmm. Every two, two or three years it goes. Michigan wins three in a row. Michigan State wins three in a row. Michigan wins two. Michigan State wins four. Like, yeah. It's just uh, runs going back and forth for the past 10, 11, 12 years. Mm -hmm. So it, it's going to be really interesting. I'm excited to see it. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan won. But at the same time, just knowing when in Michigan winning in Breslin doesn't happen a lot. Right. It's a surprise whenever it happens. It's ne it's never a thing where people just expect Michigan to win at Michigan State. Mm -hmm. So, even though I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan pulled it off, I'd still expect Michigan State to win this game because they they're like you said they've won the past three. This is Juwan Howard's first time coaching in this game. Even though he's not afraid, he won't be afraid at all. He's got Phil Martelli. Saudi has been through this. He knows what it is. So it's it's going to be a great game, man. It's yeah. it's really a toss up. Either side, I wouldn't be surprised if either side won. Yeah, and I think this is a, this is obviously an important game, not only just because of the rivalry, but because both teams have kind of had their ups and downs. And now that they're kind of starting off their Big Ten play with a banger right here on a rivalry game, um, I think both teams want to come out 
can really show like they're starting to figure out the season because this is where their season amps up and they're gonna have to play a lot better. Yeah. Um, and both teams start their schedules start to get a little tougher and they gotta really uh dig deep and kind of figure out where they're at entirely. And this is where they can make some moves and um get ready for the tournament, I think. And this kind of just sets the tone. Not it won't necessarily determine how things play out because as we saw or as we've seen in the past, you know, both these teams can make runs in the tournament no matter how they finish the season necessarily. Um, but it just gives you a better idea, I think, of how far the teams can go, especially with how up in the air, I think, just overall the top 25 is this year, that with the Big Ten being, in my opinion, the strongest conference so far yeah. um, and probably will be, that they can really make some strides um, starting with this game. And like you said, even Michigan State, hopefully, you know, winning tonight against Illinois is also kind of a scary one, even though Illinois you think of as like an okay team, but they can they could definitely do something. Yeah, they they only lost to Maryland by one at Maryland. Right. Beat Michigan at home. They're another team in the big team that you can't play around with. So yeah, if they come out focused and they beat Illinois handedly tonight. Or if they if they can pull out a close game, have guys like um number eleven, lefty, their two guard. For Illinois? No, for Michigan State. Henry? Yes. Aaron Henry, he looked good against Western. It's Western, but it looked like he was starting to get his groove. If he can step up. Yeah, they need I'm, him. I'm not I'm not sure if Cassius is starting or not. I might have to look that up. But is it's they they need to play well tonight. They really need to. I think taking a loss tonight would really have the fans, the overall, just everybody around the program would be, it would be too many question marks at this point mm -hmm. going into a game like Michigan where Michigan State fans are usually confident going into those types of games. And this would be the first time, if they lost this game, it would be the first time in a long time where everybody would be like, okay, Izzo, what, what are you going to do in this one? We're right. not sure. So, yeah. Yeah, and on the same note, I think Michigan going into this game, they've had some games where they've really struggled to shoot. And this is one of those games if you can't go into Breslin and struggle from the field. Like Tom Izzo is going to eat that alive, and he's going he's gonna to lock down on you guys. He's going to make his guys play really hard. So Michigan's going to have to do a really good job of making sure they get to the open guy, make sure they're, they're doing all their um, plays really well, and they just got to knock down open shots. That's kind of the key, and as easy as it sounds, it hasn't always been. Yeah, I, that's where having Isaiah Livers is going to hurt. I'm I'm actually going to predict Michigan State is going to win now because I'm thinking Isaiah Livers was going to be the guy that when, when things start getting out of hand, when shots aren't falling, when the offense isn't flowing, give the ball to Isaiah and he's going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. He'd be even keel. He hit shots when he needs to. And – even though, like I said, Brandon John's coming back home for this big game, starting that power forward. He's going to have his moments, but I'm not sure who they're going to throw it to when they need to get those buckets. Maybe it's Dave DeJulius. I think this is times where they're going to have to play him a lot because Eli Brooks, he's more of a guy, catch and shoot, get him hot. Xavier Simpson has his moments, but he's more of the guy that orchestrates the offense. And Teske... You can throw the ball to him and he can score, but he's not going to just go off. Right. The Julius has the capability to get hot, and when you put the ball in his hands, he can go off the dribble and just score over and over again. So I, I think there's going to be a point where he's going to need to get hot Yeah. for them to win that game. Yeah, honestly. and I, I yeah. think that's another good thing about this game for Michigan is that similar to Michigan State, trying to find like that more of a second or third option for the team, Michigan's kind of in that same boat. Where, you know, in this game with Livers not going to play, maybe they'll find that guy. Maybe it's DeJulius. Maybe it's Wagner. Maybe it's anybody. Uh, but it gives those other guys more opportunities to step up, which is going to be important down the stretch of um, the season where they're going to need other guys when somebody's off. They always, they're going to need somebody to step up. And right now, both teams are kind of struggling to figure out 
who that's going to be. But I agree with you right now, um, not having livers, I think Michigan State just has the clear advantage. Um, we'll have to see what Cassius is like, like you said. Yeah. But if he plays in any capacity, I think he, like he's a big difference maker for that team, just leadership-wise and experience-wise overall. Honestly, I, I feel like if this was at, at Michigan, I think I'd pick Michigan. It being at Michigan State, it's a huge advantage. That's usually how it's been for like the past few years. Yeah. Yep. So that's going to be super exciting game, obviously. Going to make sure to kick back and watch that one. One thirty on Sunday, CBS. Be there. I might possibly be there, so hopefully Michigan doesn't break my heart, even <laughs> though I'm not expecting anything crazy from them. Let's just hope Michigan doesn't get blown out. Yeah. And if they do, hey, it's Juwan Howard's first game at Michigan State. All right, let's take a quick look at the top 25. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of moves overall. Uh, the biggest one we talked before the show, Ohio State lost to West Virginia. Um, it only knocked Ohio State down three spots from number two to number five. And um, I think Dayton fell down a little too because they lost to Colorado. Um. They were close to the yes, top ten. They yeah. they dropped by two. Yeah. Um, and then so that pushed West Virginia up six spots to number sixteen. Um San Diego State's still undefeated, so they've they're creeping up there at thirteen. Auburn is undefeated, but they haven't moved yet. They're twelve and oh. Is Butler in the top ten yet? They're at eleven. Okay. Yeah, they they almost lost to St. John's. They're they're hitting their conference schedule now. And the big T the Big East is kind of an underrated conference. They they go five or six teams deep yeah. in teams that could potentially win that conference. Right. Uh, Louisville has dropped four spots. They lost. Um, Who did they lose to? I can't remember. They lost a close one again, I believe. Uh, oh, yeah. They lost to Kentucky, 78-70. Yeah. to 70. Um, Big win for Kentucky, too. Yeah. So, Kentucky kind of close at one point to maybe falling out of the top 25. Um, kind of saved themselves there. Um, but other than that, there there hasn't been a whole lot of moves. Same unpredictable yeah, season. It's yeah. still like a really – and I, I feel like we keep saying this every year, um, but the top 25 just gets tougher and tougher, I think. Um, you get all these kind of weird teams that you're not used to seeing. Um, yeah, they've started to become uh, tournament staples, I guess, but like the Wichita State, Dayton, um, San Diego State, Butler – Memphis, Auburn, like they're they're teams that you don't typically see every year, at least in basketball. Um, and it just shows how crazy college basketball I think has become for a lot of teams. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Um conference play is about to start for everybody, so that gets me more excited for college basketball. So I will start paying a little bit closer attention to it as as well as the uh football seasons start to wrap up. So let's quickly go to the NFL. We're going to quickly talk about it because not a ton happened. Like playoff spots were secured and things like that in week 17. But a lot of teams sat their best players, things like that. Um, so quickly, we'll go over the final standings for the picks. Last week, it was I was two down. I had 131 right. Malik had 133. And after week 17, Malik got 10 right. And I got six. So the I'm final, on my way to winning it. The final, winning it all. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, regular season, Malik has won 143 to 137. Um, and then for the playoffs, it's almost impossible for me to win, I think. Um, but, you know, either way, Listen, hats, hats off to you. Because regular season, I think, is even tougher. So I'd like to thank Jameis Winston <laughs> and Jameis Winston. That's it. I'd, yeah. And giving him him giving us that thirty for thirty is all I needed this season. Yeah. So um it all goes to crab legs, man. <laughs> the only significant thing that I think happened is uh we got an NFC East winner. Philadelphia beat the Giants. They did what they had to do. They just had to win that game. Um kicking Dallas out of the playoffs is always nice. So fun for me. Um also San Francisco secured the NFC West, uh beating Seattle. So that was kind of interesting. So we'll, we'll quickly touch on the playoffs because uh, we got uh, four games this weekend. On Saturday, the first game at 4 o'clock on ESPN, ABC, Buffalo at Houston. 
I'm super excited for the Saturday games. We kind of talked about it yeah. before the show, but Buffalo being one of my favorite teams, Texans just being an exciting team to watch. I really hope this is a good game. J.J. Watt's supposed to be back in this game, which is crazy. Uh, so that makes it exciting for Houston fans. Um, I still think that the Bills have a chance here in this game because the Texans have been so up and down and they're they're hot or cold. Like They could blow out the Bills, I think, in this game. There's a potential for that. But there's also a potential that the Bills could just slow them down and use their defense, their running game, and just kind of play more of an old school style. And I think that's where the Bills are dangerous. But I don't know. Houston's a good team. I want the Bills to win. What are your thoughts? I feel like this all comes down to Josh Allen. What does how does he respond in his first playoff game? Does he come out hot? Does he get punched in the mouth instantly? Because if he if Houston comes out and he has a terrible first quarter or a terrible first few drives, just three and outs, he starts out like 0 of six passing, gets sacked a few times. Is his confidence just gonna fade away? Or is he going to draw to the occasion? That's, I'm honestly, I'm not sure if he will because he's he's still figuring this thing out. Right. They, they didn't, I'm sure they thought they could make the playoffs, but nobody expected the Bills to to get to 10 wins this fast mm-hmm. with this young core they've been building. So, yeah, I, it mainly comes down to Josh Allen. I think on the Texan side, the Bills defense is going to be a hard thing to crack especially with their O-line being so inconsistent from on a week-to-week basis. Right. Deshaun Watson makes magic, and we know how great he is. But this is a defense that they, they after a few drives, they know what you're going to do. They're, they're not afraid. They don't bust coverage usually. Their DBs are always in position. They're, they're just a – they're like a top-five defense in the NFL. In the NFL so. Yeah. This being in Houston is a big thing. They get riled up for playoff games, but we've also seen them get destroyed in playoff games. When Brian Hoyer had probably the worst playoff performance we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I think he threw like five picks. Yeah, It was awful. So, honestly, yeah, the Bills have a great chance. I don't, I don't think this will be high scoring. Watch this be high scoring now that we're, we think it'll be low scoring. Right. But Deshaun Watson will probably hit a few deep throws. But then I think the Bills' defense will settle in. You know what? I'm, I'm going to go for it. Bills win their first playoff game in, like, over 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see it. Like I said, I hope yeah. I hope Saturday just has good games because I, I like the matchups. Um, the after or the night cap it is Tennessee at New England, which is really interesting. Uh, Tennessee, their second half of the season, basically since they started, uh, Ryan Tannehill, They've kind of turned their season around. Derrick Henry has far exceeded my expectations of what he's ever done. I th- he got the rush. Week title. 17, he got 200 yards or whatever in his final game. It, it, it seems like in the fourth quarter when everybody else is breaking down, his 6'3", 240-pound frame mm-hmm. maintains, and he just keeps pushing. Yeah. And he had, people can barely tackle him by that point. And Tannehill has found himself a favorite receiver in A.J. Brown, who has finally – Turned into what a lot of people thought he could be, so very very quickly. Yeah, people, people thought he could be this, but n- nobody thought it would be this fast. Yeah. yeah, and with Tennessee, their defense is another one that's it's pretty solid. They're not like the best defense, but they're just they're tough, and I think that comes from Coach Rabel, honestly. Um, and then New England's kind of coming in real odd. Yeah, they lost their final game of the season to Miami. Yeah, it didn't really matter, but it, sh- it it showed you there's no reason to be afraid of New England. Right. That's what that showed. Yeah. And there's so many question marks for this team. Um for once in that final game, Sony Michelle actually had a good game, but their running game is terrible. Yeah. I mean, they played Miami, so their Miami's defense isn't all that great. Tom Brady has a lot of question marks. Obviously, he hasn't looked like himself. People finally thinking that he's actually aging for once. Um, and they've they've kind of been banged up a little bit. Their defense is top-notch. Um, but against, like, this Titans team, I don't know if they're going to be able to 
win it by themselves because Tannehill has looked good. And Derrick Henry is just a horse. Yeah. And he'll just run people over. And that's not like New England's defense is based off of turnovers. At the that's kind of how they played a lot. McCordy and Gilmore, I think, have both are both like the top two in interceptions this season. And Tennessee is just good with time of possession and they run the ball and then Tannehill has just played solid at the quarterback position. So this this game is not going to be a cakewalk for New England, which I'm a big fan of. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are rooting for Tennessee in this game. Yeah. Um, as New England is kind of the America's enemy for the most part. And it's just, it's another exciting one. And it would be cool to go into like after this, this weekend and you have the bills and the Titans going on to the next round. I just think that's, that's good for the NFL and that's kind of fun. What what are your thoughts on this game? Mike Vrabel was a Patriot. He won several Super Bowls with them. Hmm. He was a key linebacker, him and Teddy Bruschi. He even caught some touchdowns in some of those Super Bowls. So Vrabel's going to have his guys ready for this game. There, I don't, there will be zero fear. He knows exactly what that atmosphere is like. But this is playoff Bill Belichick and playoff Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. And you just know they have something up their sleeve. Right. Last year, the Chargers came into the playoffs as the hot team. Their defense was fantastic. Their offense was rolling. And Belichick just flattened them. Like, out the gate. Yeah. After the first quarter, there was no doubt. The Chargers were done. I feel like the Titans are a tougher team. But... Stephon Gilmore, Devin McCourty, how's A.J. Brown going to respond to those seasoned veterans? Right. Derrick Henry, I think he's he's going to get what he gets because the, the Patriots front seven has been a bit of a problem for them right. throughout most of the season. Yeah. I just I, – I, I really like the Titans, and I'd love to see them win, but – In the back another, of your another, another first-year coach <laughs> – Hot team coming into the playoffs, playing in New England. Yep. How does this usually go? <laughs> yeah. How does the track record of this. Of course, things could change. Brady's not what he used to be. Belichick has been searching for answers with this team throughout the season. Although they're still, are they 11, or 11 wins or 12 wins this season? Um, they're still over 10. I think they have 12. Yeah, there's still a 12-win team, another 12-win Patriots team, even with all those struggles and question marks. Right. I just feel like Vabril is I mean Vabril. Vabril is gonna be too confident in this game almost. Mm -hmm. And I think Belichick, he's gonna stick to what he does and he's just gonna he's gonna outsmart Mike Vrabel and they're gonna end up winning somehow. I don't know how. I don't know the I don't know if the running game's gonna take off. I don't know if Brady's gonna all of a sudden throw three hundred yards and three touchdowns. Who knows? But I, I think the Patriots, I think they're just gonna figure it out. Another first year coach going against Belichick in the first round. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Patriots are just gonna figure it out. Yeah, that's the hardest part about the Patriots is always in the back of your mind, you're like, are they really they can't be that bad? Even though, like they're they're twelve and four or whatever they are, like we said. So and they always step up in the playoffs and you're like, Well, maybe this is the year they don't do it. And then they do it. Exactly. Like yeah. I don't know if Tom Brady's doing load management without anybody even seeing it and he's just taking plays off. Who knows? I don't know. That team is weird, and I'm scared always. Um, but it makes this game even more exciting, I think, in that fact. Uh, then on Sunday, um, kind of an interesting one, and then one that I don't think will be. But um, starting off at 1 o'clock on Sunday, Minnesota at New Orleans. I don't, I don't think we have to talk much about this one, honestly. There is talk that New Orleans, depending on what the NFL says, New Orleans might have Antonio Brown. That's what they want. I've wanted. heard nothing. They I want to sign. All Antonio. I've heard was Antonio Brown bad mouthing the Saints. So he, I, would, I would be surprised. He worked out if, for them and they loved him apparently. But all Antonio Brown has been saying is it was a publicity stunt. Oh. Well, <laughs> I guess I haven't read up recently enough then, but. Well, then he's just making a bigger mistake for himself then. 
Let's not get into Antonio Brown. Anyway, talk. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know. Minnesota's a weird team because they should have Dalvin Cook back for this game. They rested him the final two games of the season, and if they have him, that sets a lot up for this team. I know New Orleans is super good. They're one of the best teams in the NFL. Probably, probably the NFC favorite. But you never know. I'm just keeping hope for Vikings fans. That's all I got. You're, <laughs> you're, you're Lions fans. You, you're, you don't have to do that. I know. The Saints are going to win this game. This is going to be in the Superdome. It's going to be loud. Mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins is going to be uncomfortable. I mean, what's his track record in the playoffs is not great. Yeah. And Dalvin Cook, if he takes one big hit, I'm not wishing injury on him, but we've seen uh, how how much can you trust his health? Right. That offense is inconsistent. Their defense is inconsistent as well, which is even more confusing. Mm-hmm. Xavier Rose, it just looks like his talent has been sucked away by the monsters. <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. Stephon Diggs has been oddly inconsistent yeah. with that and team. Adam Thielen has been unhealthy. Yep. They're so on and off. You can't be an on and off team going into New Orleans yep. round one with that crazy crowd playing against Drew Brees. Alvin Kamara. Michael like, Thomas. Exa- exa- like, I, not only is their offense just star-studded, but their defense is top-notch as well. Exactly. Dalvin Cook will have to r- have an incredible game. For Minnesota to win this, mm-hmm. it's possible, but I don't. I don't see it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, especially, Saints. especially with the way that uh, Minnesota's defense has declined, like they're not yeah. what we thought they might be, and what they've been in the past, and the way that the Saints is this year with how well they've played through all the adversity of not having Drew Brees for a while, and their defense just making big plays. Alvin Kamara having health issues for most of the season and still not not even mattering. Exactly. Taysom, um, Taysom Hill. Your guy. The Swiss Army knife. That mm-hmm. is, I mean, I, I just I love his story so much because he was my guy at BYU. I just can't believe how talented he is overall as a football player. I saw a lot of people say this is what Tim Tebow could have been. And it's true. If Tebow was open to – Doing other stuff, he possibly could have been this, but yeah, Taysom is on a whole other level of athleticism to me. Taysom runs a four four. He's out there running routes like a tight end. He has great hands out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. You could even like line him. You could line him up as a running back. He could run trick plays and pass the ball. I mean, that offense has so many options that people didn't see coming. Yeah, and as I, we've I think, seen, yeah. we've seen in past. Sean Payton's not afraid to do stuff. Exactly. He'll take risks, um, and they're always calculated, and they tend to work out most of the time. He's one of the uh, genius minds, I think, in the NFL. So most likely, Saints, but I think this one could be a little bit more interesting than the afternoon yeah. game. Uh, in the first half, Vikings could probably hang around, make it interesting, but I think in the second half, the Saints separate. Yeah. Um, so the second game of the day, Seattle at Philadelphia. It's so weird that this game is at Philadelphia. As good as Seattle is, and they have to go to play at Philly. And that terrible NFC East. I know. (laughs) Somebody had to win it. Carson Uh, Wentz went and did it. Yeah. So, I want to say that this game is going to be a blowout as well, and Seattle just runs them. But that home field advantage thing, and the way that Philly has done it in the past, and been such a weird team. Seattle has also been a weird team this season. Yes. You saw a few weeks ago against the Cardinals. Yeah, they like, dropped the game yeah. to the Cardinals. Some games they look like the old Seahawks, and some games they look like the new Seahawks, which are mm-hmm. like searching for their identity. Yeah, and part of it, um, Russell Wilson started the season off super, super hot, and he was kind of leading the MVP race up there with Lamar Jackson. Granted, Lamar Jackson like just surpassed everybody, I think, yeah. in that that race, but at the same time, like Russell Wilson has kind of declined a little bit as the season's gone on. He's been good, but the way he, he yeah. started he off hasn't the been, season. He hasn't been willing his team to wins like he was earlier. Yeah. Which it's it's hard to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm not surprised they've dropped some games. But yeah. yeah. And they, they lost Chris Carson for the season um in week sixteen, I believe. 
Um, so they got some backups. Like we said last week, yeah, they got Marshawn Lynch. That's exciting. They did. Did you see they ran him on the one yard line for a touchdown? They had a, a like a I don't remember what the down was, but it was like basically like a third and goal at the one. Listen, there's no making up for that. And they right. ran him in. <laughs> so it was there's no funny. making up for that mistake. Yeah. Um. So both teams are kind of banged up. Um. Philadelphia has struggled with their wide receivers most of the season. Uh, Carson Wentz has looked up and down. Although he's he's figured it out now. And yeah. they, they've they got their guys that they go to mm-hmm. they, where they have it working. Yeah, and their their running back situation is really weird, too. Miles Sanders is the guy. I think they, so, They too. like playing four running backs every year for some yeah. reason. It's weird. Yeah, what um, was it? Was it Week 17 or their win? They played – Boston Scott. Boston Scott had three, like three, like touchdowns. three touchdowns yeah. against the Giants last week. Yeah. And I, I was like, who is Boston Scott? Same. Sounds like a dude we created on Madden. Yeah. I, <laughs> I have no idea who Boston Scott is. I thought it was but a he's, nickname. He's good all of a sudden. So it's good for them. They got a little bit of depth. <laughs> I just think that's the weirdest thing for Philadelphia this year. They have Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott. I never understood why they – like grab so many running backs together as is i mean yeah yeah so maybe you know the more that i talk about it and think about it maybe this game is a little more interesting just for the fact of nobody oh, yeah, knows I, what these teams I, are gonna I, do i think it's gonna be really interesting yeah. because if carson Wentz gets it going from the start i think it that duel between russell wilson and carson Wentz is i'm excited to watch that matchup yeah and then philly is another one of those places it's tough to play there yeah yeah. For both teams, but that's a that's a brutal crowd in Philly. But if Philadelphia gets off to a good start, their crowd's going to be behind them, and that's going to be that's going to be tough. Now, Russell Wilson, I would take over almost any other quarterback to deal with that kind of pressure. Yeah. But you know, it it would amp up Philly, and their defense isn't that great, but it could push them over the top, maybe. So you know, I guess I guess this game is a little more exciting now that I've talked about it. So maybe I'll be sitting on the couch all weekend long and watch all these games. Well, first half of Minnesota and New Orleans. We'll see how that works. Um, so that's basically NFL. Um, we got the wild card round for the playoffs. So let's get to the kind of the main topic of the day, college football playoffs, college football bowl games. There's been some exciting ones, and we'll quickly touch on some of the ones that are important quote unquote um and then we'll we'll really talk about like college football playoffs playoff games uh so friday december 27th uh big one iowa beat up on usc it was a little bit of a surprise i think for iowa to put up 49 but i expected them to win yeah usc is just in a uh, i i don't know what's going on that athletic program it's like they don't care about the football program anymore. Just keeping Clay Helton, the recruiting class is not very good. They get blown out by Iowa. It's it's not looking very good for them right now. Yeah. Uh, also a surprise, well, a surprise, Texas A&M beat Oklahoma State 24-21. Thought, I, I thought that was kind of surprising. Um, I mean, Oklahoma State's not – they're ranked 24, 25. So, I mean – it's not a big upset, but I don't know. I felt like they were the better team. Texas A&M has been a – they've been in most of the games they've played this year. They just <clears throat> could never figure out consistency on offense with Kellen Mond. He's always hot and cold. He he goes crazy in fourth quarters when his team is down three touchdowns, and they always end up losing by, like, seven. Mm-hmm. But it's, like, the first three quarters that always kills them. But, yeah, they, they were able to play tough and win this one. So, yeah, yeah good win for them. Um, North Carolina blew out Temple 55-13, capped off a pretty nice season Listen, for North man. Carolina. Sam Howell, mm-hmm. he is a, he's going to be a Heisman candidate very soon. That kid is the truth, and North Carolina is only getting better. Yeah, it, it's weird to see North Carolina be a good football team. They're known for basketball, not this year, um, but football, it's kind of interesting to see their growth that they've had the last couple of years. Um. Michigan State, they won. I didn't want them to. <laughs> um, 
yeah. because people are going to want to save D'Antonio now. Yeah, the the receiving core in that game looked pretty good actually, although it was against a Wake Forest defense that right, yeah, gives up points a yeah. lot. If if Brian Lewerke goes twenty six of thirty seven, three twenty, and a touchdown, I'm saying the defense isn't that good. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, they look solid. I guess it's it's nice for them to win a bowl game, but you finish seven and six. Good way for the seniors to go out, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Air Force beat Washington State. Not much to be said. Great win. Eleven wins for Air Force. Yeah, solid. Hell season. of a season. Yeah. yeah. Um. Then Saturday, a lot of the big games happened. I'll go over the smaller ones first. Notre Dame beat Iowa State. Unfortunately, thirty-three to nine. I think we both wanted Iowa yeah. State to win. They, this Notre Dame's they they just had better athletes. And, right. Yep. Yeah. They were they were just at a real big disadvantage player yep. wise. Uh, Penn State beaten. Memphis, 53-39. to 39. was not expecting as high a score as this one was, but Journey Brown had one crazy game. That that Penn State should be happy that Journey Brown had that game because it, it was not an impressive showing for them all around. Yeah. They, they, had, they had a clear athlete advantage. Mm-hmm. A lot of their defenders were just ridic- just smacking Memphis, although they were still able to get some points and – they they got to figure out the quarterback position in the over the next few years because I feel like where they where they're at now they're not going to get to the playoff and do anything serious. Mm-hmm. They got to improve there. They can't just rely on their running backs like they have been for the past three or four years. Yeah. And now the college football playoffs. The first game kind of happened how we thought it probably would. I hoped differently. It was even it was even wilder than I expected. Yeah. Uh, LSU beat Oklahoma 63-28. They they did more than just beat them. And most of that came in the first half. Joe Burrow finished with 493, seven touchdowns in this game. He also had a rushing touchdown. He had right? over 407 touchdowns in the in the first half. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Justin Jefferson had two over 200 yards, four touchdowns. 14 catches. <laughs> all in the first yeah. half. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Oklahoma's defense is bad, and we knew that going into it. This was, but LSU yeah, just picked them else. apart. Yeah, it was. I, f- I kind of feel bad for Oklahoma that they they got just toyed with that bad. Mm-hmm. Like LSU could have almost scored sixty yeah. in the first half if they wanted to. I I kind of wish Coach O would have just kept the foot on the pedal, so they would have scored like eighty. <laughs> there there was a meme that I saw on the internet, and it was there's a picture of. A, a little girl that's crying and it's like her mother's like pointing at her and kind of talking to her and then the heading was Oklahoma in the locker room at halftime talking about why we should go play in the second half yeah ba- basically yeah. <laughs> they they had nothing to play for in that second <laughs> half it was it was bad it was really unfortunate to see that's how Jalen Hurts is going to finish his college career yeah. he didn't uh, look that good either no unless she was on him yep and I mean, now LSU has solidified themselves, and they're in the national championship game. Um, it was exciting just to watch. I think LSU, it wasn't an exciting game, but watching LSU work and just carve up everything was incredible. The second game, however, Clemson versus Ohio State, that was a classic. That has yeah. That was one of the best games, I think, of the season. Um, it was super exciting. It was really close the entire way. And Clemson stars came out at the right times. Uh, they made plays when they needed to. And Ohio State did blow the lead a little bit. They they got they should have been up like twenty three nothing. Yeah. They struggled late in the game and Trevor Lawrence did his thing. Travis Etienne, like we talked about, is kind of that guy that nobody really or people seem to forget, and he had another monster game. Trev, Trevor Lawrence's legs were the biggest reason to watch. That was, that I game, think, the biggest surprise. Is, um, he rushed for about fourteen or fifteen times. Broke off a sixty-plus yard touchdown. Yeah, which, which he, out of nowhere, pretty much changed that, yeah, the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, sixteen carries, one hundred and seven yards rushing. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, and like, yeah, Trevor Lawrence is a big guy. He's got. Strong legs, he can run, but that's not like what he's known for. 
And to see him do that in this game was incredible. He didn't even have the greatest game passing. I mean, yeah. he was a little inefficient, but he didn't throw any picks. And I think that's really important. Whereas on the other side, Justin Fields had two interceptions, one touchdown. And that, the, the, the the interception is the one that... Yeah, yeah. the ending, the, the interception towards the end, kind of rough. It was a miscue. Not entirely his fault. It's kind of like a 50-50. It was a miscommunication right. at the worst time possible. So, yeah. Yep. Gut-wrenching. And but then, it happened uh, to Ohio State, so yeah, it is right. what it is. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> um, J.K. Dobbins, though. But listen, man. It, the guy's incredible. He's the best running back in the country in the draft to me. He is a he's an absolute machine. Mm-hmm. It, that's that's the only way I can describe him. He's a machine. Yeah. Um. So now, this sets up Clemson versus LSU for the national championship game. We're not going to see it for two weeks now. They yeah. don't, they don't <laughs> play till the 13th. Gotta wait for that preview. <laughs> they gotta wait for all the other games to finish up. So we won't really talk about it. Um, but it's pretty exciting. We'll see if Clemson can keep their their reign of terror over, or if this whole Joe Burrow experience can take over. Yeah, it seems like LSU might be the team of destiny this year because they're they're just on a roll we haven't seen. Yeah, yeah. So we'll keep rolling with these other bowl games that happened throughout uh, this week. Um, on Monday, December thirtieth, Florida beat Virginia thirty-six to twenty-eight in a close game. I'm I'm so happy Virginia was in it for most of the game. Yeah, it was, Bryce, Bryce Perkins is so good. Yeah, I I think he's an underrated draft prospect. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a good enough thrower, and he's he's fitting where the NFL is going. Yeah, some teams need to really look at him. I agree. Um, Western Kentucky beat Western Michigan, unfortunately, twenty-three to twenty. No, I, I watched game. that game. It was it was one of the it was an ugly game. Yeah, yeah, so, very ugly. You know, it was close, so it was exciting for that fashion. Yeah, um, Louisville beating Mississippi State thirty eight twenty eight, unexciting. Louis- Louisville's back on track though, so I'm happy for them. Yeah, uh, Cal beat Illinois thirty five to twenty. Meh, not much to say <laughs> again. I wish Illinois would have won it. Yeah, they got to a bowl game, so it that's cool. good for them. Good right. for them and Lovey. Tuesday, December 31st, Texas beat Utah 38-10. to 10. Listen, man, this, these past How two games they do have that? been so weird. They do this every – this is the third time in a row. They've won a bowl – they've made it to the bowl game, and they've been the underdog, and they've won. This, this and is, this game – this was a team that we thought could be in, in the college football playoff. Yeah. This, this game is really going to upset Texas fans next season <laughs> when they underwhelm again. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's gonna be frustrating. I think Utah's gonna be back to maybe winning eleven to twelve games next season. Honestly, yeah, because yeah, the Pac-12 is basically them in Oregon at this point, right? And it's so weird, like yeah, the way they finished the season is off. But so the way that Texas got this done, just through the ground game, like Sam Ellinger threw twelve of eighteen for two hundred yards. He had three touchdowns. But it was mostly their their run game that set up most of these touchdowns, yeah. uh, which I think was pretty interesting. But definitely a surprise. I, Texas just figures it out, I guess. I don't know. Um, moving on, where are we at? Navy beating Kansas State, capping off a very good season for them, twenty to seventeen. Kansas State just picked up a four star quarterback for next year's class. So even though they lost this game. They're already improving. Yeah. Uh, Kentucky beat Virginia Tech 37-30. to One of the most underrated and upcoming programs in the country, Kentucky. Yeah. They're coming. <laughs> Lynn Bowden, 34 carries, 233 <laughs> yards. Yeah. <laughs> Two touchdowns. wonder how they play that game. Another guy that shouldn't be overlooked in the draft. He's a, an elite playmaker. Yep. Uh, Arizona State beating Florida State 20 to 14. That game was so, oh my God. The Sun Bowl is always boring. Let's yeah. just move on from that. A <laughs> lot of turnovers. Yeah. A lot of turnovers. Uh, Wyoming beat Georgia State 38 to 17. Another solid Wyoming season. Yeah. Let's just move on to the <laughs> January 1st games. I just thought, you know, Honestly. while we're here, we just talk about them. <laughs> we'll touch them. Uh, Whoever's listening for Wyoming football, I'm sorry. Go Cowboys. <laughs> All right. January 1st. We had the big games. Michigan taking on Alabama. Alabama won 35-16. Listen, man, same old Michigan. They uh, 
They looked pretty good in the first half. The biggest problem they couldn't get in the end zone is everybody knew they had to score. They had to get touchdowns to win this game. They couldn't do it. Yep. Uh, Nahi Harris had a great game. Najee Harris. Um, Nahi. <laughs> I, nah, he Harris, ladies and gentlemen. I was looking ahead and I saw Harris. <laughs> Silent J. I'm not, I won't play, play me for that one. Uh, 24 carries, 136 yards, two touchdowns. Yeah. In the fourth quarter, he was just bullying them. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jared Judy as well, just making big play after big hey, play. Shea Patterson's gone. Michigan fans, you can celebrate now. Are you happy? Yes. Shea Patterson's <laughs> gone. That's He did not look good in this game. and. Yeah. I'm kind of happy for it because the way that he kind of talked about this game going into it, I was a little disappointed the way he – So many overthrows, mm-hmm. just nonstop overthrows. Yep. Um, the big game that I was excited to watch that I couldn't really watch because I was at my parents and they don't have cable anymore, uh, Minnesota and Auburn. Minnesota won this game 31-24. to 24. Fleck, What a win for Minnesota as a program. First 11-win season since 1904. I'll repeat – Nineteen zero four. That's a long time. That's that was almost that was oh my god almost in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, almost. And, and they they like stopped Jonathan Taylor. He had twenty one carries for ninety four yards. If you were any other running back, that'd be a pretty solid day. But for Jonathan Taylor, that's not enough. Are you talking about Wisconsin? Oh my god! I'm looking at. <laughs> I'm all over the place. <laughs> Yesterday was New Year's Day, and <laughs> I totally agree that after New Year's, yeah. you need one day of rest <laughs> and then another day to have a day off. Bear with me. Dedication. We keep it going. We'll, we'll get to keep that later. Rolling. But, yeah, Minnesota. Tanner the, Morgan had a great game. They have the best receiving duo in the Big Ten, which is nuts. Yeah. Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman mm-hmm. are ridiculous. Yeah. Tyler Johnson had a, a crazy one-handed catch yeah. for a touchdown. and. This is a huge win for Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the reputation there that program is gaining. Yeah. And PJ Flex just the respect he's gaining as a coach. Minnesota fans, I'm I, I'm happy for you. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Golden Gophers, man. I I like Minnesota. I like yeah. their uniforms, like their coach, like their style. They're going to make the Big 10 championship a, a few more times in this decade. Yeah. Good win. Um okay. Now we'll talk about Oregon and Wisconsin. We'll talk about Jonathan Taylor now. He was very eager to talk about Jonathan Taylor. Here we are. Oh, man. <laughs> um, this was a good game. Uh, yeah. Justin Herbert, I thought, you know, in this season has kind of been up and down. Oregon's been a great team. But, you know, for him to come back for his senior season when he could have went to the NFL draft last year, been a really good pick. To come back, he really needed to show out, and I don't think he necessarily did until this game. I think he had better moments last season, honestly. Yes, I, yeah. I agree, 100%. Um, yeah, the team was better this year. Yeah, and even in this game, like he didn't do it entirely with his arm, but he got three rushing touchdowns. He willed his team to victory, I think, in this game, and they had a really good season for yeah. Oregon squad. Oregon, Oregon. People don't realize how high they're raising up right now. Mm-hmm. They are literally, they've taken over California in recruiting. Yeah. They're, every top kid on the West, they are just scooping them up. Mm-hmm. And it's already paying dividends. The The talent is increasing. Mario Cristobal is coaching his butt off. Yeah. Oregon is top of the Pac-12 right now and might maintain there. They might get to the playoff soon. Yeah. And, and it's in a different style than, you know, what people have exactly. come to know yeah. Oregon as that running team, the Wildcat sort of team. Yeah, it's not the spread offense, right. fast-paced, yeah. They're they're doing it in more of a traditional way. Traditional, yeah, yeah. Traditional program way and I think that helps them in the long term to stay competitive with other teams. So you don't have to look for those specific niche guys to fit your program. Um and they're going to be a team to watch out for. Um as I said before, Wisconsin goes out on kind of a sour note. They looked really good early on in the season. Uh, they still had a really solid season, but for them to go out like this, I think it was a little bit rough. Jonathan Taylor struggled down the stretch in some big games, as a lot of people thought he was one of the Heisman favorites early on and just kind of crumbled. And, you know, their their offense was just not that great at times. Um. 
Oh, the nightcap, Georgia versus Baylor. I only saw the first half of this game. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a bad game, but it wasn't anything special. Like Georgia, just Georgia was in control, in control for most. Of, yeah, right. Um, they beat Baylor twenty six to fourteen. Jake Fromm had a solid game. I mean, he threw it to Pickens basically every time, and that's all they needed. Uh, Pickens, George Pickens had one hundred seventy five yards and a touchdown. Jake Fromm had two hundred fifty total t- t- total yards. Yeah, George Pickens is getting more help next year, so yeah, yeah, it won't just be all him. He'll yep. he'll get a lot of catches, but yeah. Mm-hmm. And congratulations to Baylor for just having this season. Yeah, they were a one loss. I mean, one win team a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Like we'll Matt Rule, it. there's a reason why every NFL team is trying to scoop up Matt Rule right now. Yeah, and I hope he stays at Baylor for a few more years. Yep. So they finish at eleven and three. Yeah. Um. Right now, Boston College is playing Cincinnati. I don't know if you're interested in that. I like Cincinnati. <laughs> Cincinnati's a ranked yeah. team, so that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but not much going on right there. Most of the big bowl games are out of the way. Yeah. Um, there's a few left over. Uh, tonight, Indiana and Tennessee play. So that'll be our. That'll be a pretty solid game. Right, another Big Ten team. Maybe I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. We'll see. We'll recap a few of them next week. Yeah. Uh, so we got a few minutes left. Well, I'll quickly go over some NBA stuff. There's not a whole lot again. NBA has been kind of weird this year. Like it's kind of been not boring necessarily because the teams are really good. And I think like as the season goes on and the playoffs come up, it's going to be really exciting. But this regular season has been kind of odd. Yeah. Certain teams are breaking out that you haven't expected. Yeah. Other teams have fallen off. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's 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 been entertaining and also at times just like, eh. Yeah, we're getting close to the... It's not as exciting as I thought it would be, but it's still exciting. Yeah, we're getting close to All-Star Weekend. Uh, that'll be up, coming up in February, so All-Star voting is kind of starting. Um, and then the season will start to ramp ramp up as the games wane away. Um, big news, though, in the NBA. David Stern has passed away at age 77, former uh, commissioner on the NBA kind of the commissioner known for bringing the NBA back to life yeah, and kind of parting the way for Adam Silver to kind of start making changes. But David Stern, definitely an integral part in NBA history. A lot of players liked him as a commissioner. Um, I think early on, a lot of people liked him. I think later on, he started to get a little bit more controversial. Right. But yeah, he, he came in in a time where the NBA needed to transition because the 70s was a pretty ugly time. Yep. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson come in. He becomes the commissioner in 84. They have that legendary draft. Mm -hmm. He starts making changes, and things go to full swing from there. And, yeah, yeah, he was was one of the main people that got NBA players back into the Olympics. Right. The Dream Team came in 92. That changed everything. So, yeah, 80s, 90s, he's one of the biggest reasons for that. Although – People were kind of mad about the dress code and the fact that he switched the high school rule, but right, yeah, he made major changes, huge part of NBA history. Yep. So unfortunately for the NBA to lose David Stern, um, quickly I'll get back into the standings real quick. In the East, the Celtics have taken the number two spot away from the Heat at the moment, uh, only due to a tiebreaker, I believe. Um, but the Celtics have kind of started to get back on track. Miami's still playing super good. Their games are fantastic, like every other night. Mm-hmm. I, people need to like watch their. Yeah. If you can't watch Miami Heat games on your TV, watch their highlights every day. Because yeah, I agree. Every other night they have just wild, crazy games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Toronto's still in the fourth spot. Indiana is the fifth seed, twenty-two and twelve, and Listen, they man. still don't have Victor Oladipo. The the coaching that is going on there, the development of those players, Nate McMillan. Yeah. Possible coach of the year if they keep going up. Sabonis is probably he might be an all star. I think he, he might he be, could a, be he might be a reserve. Mm-hmm. He's because yeah, him and Brogdon have been out of this world. Aaron Holiday has stepped up. That whole team is just stepping up. It's great to see. Yeah. And it shows you how crazy the East is as the Philadelphia seventy sixers are in the sixth seed at the moment. Um That's because they they impress and underwhelm every other night. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. And then it's a huge fall off after that. <laughs> yeah. So the 76ers of the sixth seed sit at 23 and 13. 
the next team, the Brooklyn Nets, sit at 16 and 16. 16 and 16. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And then you got the Orlando Magic in eight, uh, Chicago Bulls, Hornets, and our lowly Pistons back in the oh 11th boy. seed. Yeah. Only two wins away from the Cavaliers. <laughs> yeah. The Pistons. It, it is, it's, it's, it's insane, man. To call the Pistons a dumpster fire would be an understatement, I think, at the moment. Uh, Blake Griffin is still having injury issues. He, he can't get healthy. And when he's playing, he's not that good. Right. He hasn't looked as good as he did last year. Hey, this is this is what they traded for. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what they traded yeah, for. Yeah, and I'm not going to put the blame on him necessarily. Exactly. Uh, because of how good he came out last year and played for this team. for Just for that season alone last year. I don't care about anything he, yeah, else he does for the He's Pistons. basically won over Detroit <laughs> with that season alone, yeah. which tells you something. Yeah. Um, and so they've been left with Andre Drummond being, being the best player on the team, which is sad. As good as Andre is, he can't be the number one or number two option on a team. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the Pistons tank, please. That's all I got to say. Play your young guys. Develop some guys. Uh, Makai Luke has looked pretty good in the last few games. Play him. This is what I said last year. Play mm -hmm. him. Yep. Kid is good. Uh, the, also. Also, don't watch Charlotte Hornets highlights. Watch Devontae Graham highlights. There's there's something going on in Charlotte that is just weird. Yeah. He is developing into like a star <laughs> out of nowhere. He's averaging like 17, like seven and yeah. five. Like it is wild. See, he's the go to guy in Charlotte right now. Yeah. Charlotte has some weird some weird nights where they yeah. just play really well. Exactly. Um the Western Conference kind of the same. They haven't really moved a whole lot. Lakers set atop. Followed by the Nuggets, Clippers, Rockets, and Mavs, those two weird teams this season. The Rockets. The Mavericks are better than the Rockets. Down. Please, everybody needs to know that. Yeah. The Mavericks are a better team. Yep. But they've uh they've struggled in their last couple weeks. The Mavericks have, but I think they're gonna be there. The big surprise, Oklahoma City Thunder sitting at the seventh seed Listen, right man. now. They are playing really well. Dennis Schroeder, Shy Gil, just Alexander. Yep. Steven Adams is still steady. I mean, Chris Paul is doing a great job of just being mm -hmm. a leader. They, they, they're doing really good. Yeah. Surprise. And when Danilo Gallinari is healthy, he's a great addition to any team. Yeah. That's why I thought this team had talent on their team. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think it would translate this well, at least. Um, also, Terrence Ferguson isn't terrible anymore, so that helps. Yeah. San Antonio Spurs sit at the eighth seed uh, to round out the Western Conference. Portland Trailblazers are still in it. They're at 14 and 21. I think Port I think Portland is going to jump into the eight seed soon. I think so too. Yeah. I I feel like it's a matter of time. They've lost five in a row somehow. And Carmelo had a great game last night at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. I don't know. Something's up with Tor Portland, but I I think they'll figure it out. Uh, the rest is kind of you know these bottom of the barrel teams. Sacramento's lost eight in a row. How about that Minnesota fall off? It it is insane. Didn't they? They started off like. Yeah, Not, they started good. Yeah. They started off real. They've just completely fell off a cliff from there. Yep. They've they've really got to do some soul searching with Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins. No, I agree. This this is why I said until the All Star break, I won't say anything about him or them because they're the Timberwolves, man. What do you what do you expect? Yep. The Pelicans have been playing a little better lately. Yeah, they have. Uh, Lonzo's and, getting into his groove. Brandon Ingram is playing like a star. Yeah. The only downfall is that there's a lot of teams inquiring about Drew Holiday. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, it would hurt the Pelicans, but, you know, if they're already going for this young core that they have now and Zion returning soon, maybe it's not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, the, I, the Western Conference is actually pretty wide open as far as like the lower seeds go. So you never know there. Um, so the NBA season will start to get more interesting, I think as well, similar to college basketball, basketball season starting to ramp up a little bit. We're starting to get a feel for a lot of these teams. Um, but we'll talk more about that uh, in the coming weeks as the football seasons start to wrap up. Um, and then we'll go from there. Um, next week, we'll recap those NFL uh, playoff games. We will maybe talk a little bit more about the college football final. We'll talk a lot about the Michigan-Michigan State game. And we will yeah. talk about Big Ten teams and more conference play um, from the NCAA as those basketball games begin. Um, so we'll see you guys next week. Uh, I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill. We will see you guys next time.
Joey, will Detroit sports make any real progress in this decade? Probably not. Probably not. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs>